Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Covert, and today's episode is the top five best cornerbacks in the 2018 NFL Draft class based on analytics. And the analytics we're going to be using, and keep in mind, it's analytics, it's data. It's not based on my opinion on film. It's not based on, you know, a ranking. It, it is data. It's entirely data. And the data we're going to be using is market share data, uh, particularly sole attacker market share data and pass deflection market share data. Those two data points is where you take a individual defensive statistic and you divide it by the team total. Uh, for example, sole attacker market share production is essentially taking the sole tackle. So let's say a cornerback had 40 sole tackles in, in one season and the team had 400 sole tackles, uh, then that cornerback would have 10% solo tackle market share production essentially and if you take that number you know you take that production and you compare it to every single cornerback since the 1989 NFL draft class then you get a statistical model then you get a way to kind of compare how how the past great cornerbacks performed in these particular metrics and that is exactly what we're going to do we're going to be testing out a new thing here I'm going to include the very bottom threshold, the bot like the outlier sort of production, and I'm also going to be adding the average production for that particular threshold. So if it's a Pro Bowler, I'm going to average the scores for the Pro Bowlers and average the scores for the All Pro guys, and then also show you what the bottom like what the outlier threshold is for that particular uh, outcome as well. Um, so that's going to be included here when it comes to production th thresholds. Uh, age score is also really important. Age is really important at cornerback, actually. Uh, it's one of those big sort of determining factors for all pro, pro bowl thresholds. Uh, cornerbacks that are very, very good are usually very young when they come out and are usually very productive and very young as well. So we're going to be looking at the age score. And we'll get to the thresholds when we get to that point. And we're also going to be looking at the speed score. And... As much as people say speed doesn't matter at cornerback and look at Justin Gilbert, although there were things in Justin Gilbert's profile from a production standpoint and from a age standpoint that would have said don't draft him that high. But the bottom line is speed is still important at the cornerback position. It still plays a vital role uh, in terms of if a cornerback has the potential to be a guy who can cover wide receivers everywhere and you know what the potential is. So uh, we're using the speed score. You know, and the speed score we're going to be getting from NFLDressCout.com. Uh, they usually report preliminary 40-yard dashes and heights and weights, and that's what we're going to use for that particular metric. So that is how – those are the three main metrics we're going to be using uh, to get to the top five on this list. And now let's get to the list at number five. At number five, we have Arion Springs, cornerback uh, out of Oregon. Uh, when it comes to height and weight, he is 5'11", turn 5 pounds with a 4.55 40-yard dash. Uh, based on his uh, production, he had a 31.62 uh, solo tackle market share score, 88.06 uh, pass deflection score. Uh, his solo tackle market share score doesn't exactly hit all pro or pro bowl level uh, when it comes to that particular metric. Uh, it's not... You know amazing if you will but uh, his passive election mark share is very good uh, it hits at least all the thresholds it needs to hit in terms of all pro slash pro ball thresholds uh, it's just that his solo tackle is just not really that amazing so uh, I will be very excited to see if he can improve these solo tackle mark share scores he's also on this list because he has a speed score of 71.07 out of 100 and again this is based on him being 5'11 to earn five pounds uh, 71.07 hits at least a Pro Bowl threshold when it comes to speed at the cornerback position, uh, which is good. So he's just someone that if he can improve a solo tackle mark share production, you know, become much better in terms of uh, tackling players uh, and getting those solo tackle stuff uh, on top of his other sort of things. He could be someone that could end up being a potential Pro Bowl cornerback even. So um, I'll be very excited to see what happens with him, but that's why he's number five on this list is because of not really having amazing solo tackle mark chair, but definitely having pass deflection that is decent and his speed score is also fairly decent as well for his uh, size. At number four, we have Dietrich Nichols, a cornerback out of South Florida. Uh, when it comes to height and weight, he's 5'10", 189 pounds with a 4'37", 40 yard dash according to NFLDraftScout.com. 
Uh, bases production, he put up a 32.18 solo tackle mark share score, which isn't that impressive. Uh, he does have a 77.15 uh, uh, market share production, well, pass flexion uh, score, which is very good. Uh, hits all the levels in terms of Pro Bowl potential. But the reason he's number four in this list is because of his speed score. Has a 91.46 overall speed score. You know, running 4.37 is very impressive. Even though it's what was initially reported, it's still an impressive time nevertheless. Uh, he just needs to improve his solo tackle market share production. And if he does... Uh, he could be someone that people could see as a much higher prospect amongst the cornerbacks in this class. But overall, <coughs> he's a good profile. Lots of potential here. It's just a matter of him improving uh, you know, his solo tackle marks and some of his other marks uh, to get better in terms of those particular uh, production thresholds. At number three, we have Amon Marshall, a cornerback out of USC. Uh, when it comes to height and weight, he's six foot, two hundred pound, pounds with a four, five, three, forty yard dash. For NFLDraftScout.com, uh, base of his production, he put up a fifty-five point zero four solo tackle market share score, a seventy-two point two nine uh, pass deflection market share score. And based on that production, his solo tackle market share doesn't quite hit all Pro Pro Bowl thresholds for the most part, except for like bottom end thresholds. Uh, and his pass deflection market share is decent, but it's not amazing, but it is good. Uh, he's also a big reason why he's number three in this list, though, is because of his age score of 97.73 out of 100, which is very good. Uh, his speed score is only 59.84 out of 100, which is not so good. This could improve. He could have other athleticism traits that are very good or impressive or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but the but the bottom line is is that uh, his production is okay, very good age score. Speed isn't amazing, but there are lots of positives in terms of his profile. So the big things that really help him out to be number three is his age score. Uh, but he does need to improve his solo tackle mark share, and he should improve his pass flexion mark share if we're going to take him a lot seriously uh, as a higher-end sort of cornerback prospect. At number two, we have Jari Alexander, a cornerback out of Louisville. Uh, based on height and weight, he's 5'11", 192 pounds with a 4'5". Four, 5 uh, 40 yard dash uh, 4 4 5 uh, based on his uh, production he has a 43.94 solo tackle mark share score 69.78 solo tackle mark share score both those marks aren't amazing again solo tackle mark share doesn't really hit the marks it needs to hit in terms of pro bowl all pro outcomes at least the averages when it comes to the position nor does his pass flex mark share hit the average for pro bowl or all pro outcomes but he has a very good age score. Uh, 97.30 is his age score. And his speed score is 73.67 out of 100, which is also very good. So he has Pro Bowl level speed, very young player. He just has to bump his production up significantly in solo tackle and pass flexion mark share production. And if he does that, then he's someone that I think should be considered uh, one of the top cornerbacks in this class uh, with Pro Bowl potential at that position. But he needs to improve his production. Uh, tremendously when it comes to solo tackle and pass flexion mark share. Uh, and if he does, then there's a lot more positive things that could happen in his future, on top of seeing what the rest of his athleticism profile is. But that's why he's number two in this list, because of his age, because of his speed score, and because he doesn't have amazing production, but at least he has enough production. Like, it's not tremendously below average, you know, when it comes to his production profile. So, And that is why he's number two on this list. At number one, which shouldn't be a surprise, but it's Tavares McFadden, cornerback out of Florida State. Uh, when it comes to height and weight, he's 6'198 pounds with a 4'4", 4, 940 yard dash. Uh, based on his production, which his only real area of concern is that his solo tackle mark share score is only 9.51 out of 100, uh, which is really low. Uh, there's never been a All-Pro Pro Bowl cornerback with a solo tackle mark share score that low uh, in a very long time, um, and you know that's something that he definitely needs to improve. And I know some people may bring up, well, he's a man corner and he's not asked to, you know, whatever. The bottom line is, is the best cornerbacks, every single one, even Deion Sanders was helping out in the run game and tackling guys in space uh, consistently. In fact. I'm going to be doing a video on Deion Sanders soon, so be, be on the lookout for that uh, in terms of just his tackling prowess. He, he was no slouch, man. He wasn't a business decision kind of guy consistently. He was making plays in terms of the running game. 
Uh, but yeah, McFadden just needs to improve that. But if he does, his other marks are very good. Uh, his pass flex mark shares 89.74 out of 100, which hits all the marks you want to hit when it comes to pass flex mark share. His age score is 97.16 out of 100, and he has a 62.53 speed score. So if he can bump that solo tackle mark share up a decent amount, uh, he could be someone that could be a pro bowler uh, long-term based on his overall profile. But if he doesn't bump that solo tackle mark share up, it's just going to be a big question as to just everything with him. Like it's just it's just going to be a big question mark because you know again, great cornerbacks have at least a baseline in terms of their solo tackle mark share production, in terms of the amount of times they're able to make plays, solo tackles, you know, in space consistently. And when you have a cornerback who's just too preoccupied with pass deflections and all the other kind of stuff. Uh, I just, I don't know, I just wonder about guys like that. But he is number one on this list. He does have a ton of positives on paper. It's just something to think about as a potential sort of thing down the road as to hopefully he improves his uh, solo attack mark share production in the future because if not, he would have to end up being an outlier, which I never like to predict outliers. I just don't like to do it because there's so many variables that, have to go right for a guy to become an outlier and um you know but but again he's number one because of that good profile and that is why he's the top corner in the 2018 class this concludes the top five best cornerbacks in the 2018 nfl draft class based on analytics um, my name is james Coburn. you can find my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com you can also follow me on twitter at geometrics and if you like this content and you want more content like this be sure to leave a like and subscribe Share this video as well with friends and family, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.